So it's that time of year again, and like me, you're probably starting to feel a little spooky, a little ghoulish, and maybe just a little peckish with some tasty, tasty brains. I'm Adam from Elm Tech, and today I'm going to be taking a look at SketchUp's match photo to create a model from a photo. And that image, if you're not familiar with it, is one of the famous interior shots of the Overlook Hotel from Stanley Kubrick's 1980 adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining. Here's Johnny! <laughs> So here's the photo that I've chosen and of course it's featuring the iconic carpet. Usually when choosing an image for photo match there's a couple of things that I look to avoid. I try to avoid images that have either been straightened or cropped in something like Photoshop or images that have been taken using a perspective correcting lens. So these are typically the types of photos that we see in professional architectural photography. However, this still shot was taken from the movie and it probably hasn't been digitally straightened and hopefully it will have minimal cropping applied to it so things should work reasonably well. So in SketchUp, let's um, fire up the match photo. Now we can either go up to the camera setting here and we can choose match new photo or in our tray we can use the match photo option and click the little plus. So I'm going to pick the photo that I want to use, that one and it's going to land on your screen something like this and this can be a little bit daunting if you're not familiar with it um, so let's turn off the grid and we can see Laura we can see our axis and I'd always recommend that we do this before we start modeling because it can get a little bit confusing having 3d stuff in there um, so what I'll do actually I'll hide um, I'll hide Laura Let's hide you for a moment come back into our match photo. So we've got our axis here, we've got these guides that are basically controlling where the axes sit within the photo that we're going to be matching. We have this yellow line which is the horizon and this will move the vanishing points all together. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this uh, origin somewhere that we can see clearly and I'm going to say I'm going to sit on this corner here this bit of skirting board in theory that should be 90 degrees to that and what we're going to do we're going to come down we're going to place the first of all just to get this roughly sorted out we're going to place one axis along the top there let's find a second one is that you already already there and then for our red axis, let's come back down here, zoom right in, we're going to place that going along the bottom edge of this skirting board here. So we could do one there, we could do a second one, we could do on the top edge if we wanted. And what should happen is things should start to fall into place in terms of things starting to become level within the image. At any point we can move these lines to a different reference point. You may have seen me doing that already, but we could say, well actually I want to use the top edge of these doors as a reference. We could say, I don't want to use the bottom edge of the skirting, I want to use the top edge. And then for our green ones, because our door is perpendicular still let's choose that edge and then for our other green marker let's choose this beam here something like that whatever you can see most clearly and basically what should happen is as we align these our axis should now be correct within the photo. So we've got our green axis following off into the distance, our green axis going across the screen, and then we've got our blue axis going upwards. So this is what we want really. And uh, if I click done or come over here and do done, we can go back. We can actually bring back Laura now. There she is. And we can see we've got a tiny Laura in our picture there. But we can see here that um, our human scale model of Laura, Devil Laura, is very small compared to the photo. I, I, know, I guess we are um, thinking spooky at the moment, so maybe she's some kind of imp, but she's not. She's meant to be human, so, <laughs> so let's uh, deal with that. So we'll go over and turn our grid on, 
and what we can see here is the grid spacing down here set to one meter so each one of these blocks is at one meter by one meter what we're going to do is we're going to look at Laura so we could say let's bring her over to this door here let's place her so the origin is on the bottom edge of this door and we can basically scale Laura and our world grid spacing will scale with her so we could say that this door is meant to be two meters tall and we can now see that Laura is roughly the right size versus that door now so I'm going to return my origin to this corner and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to now place the origin where I think um, the wall is behind that skirting board so I think probably around about there okay so let's go back into our edit editing mode now let's actually start doing some sketchupy things so let's grab our rectangle tool and let's start in our origin I'm going to press up on the keyboard so I can be drawing along a blue, the blue axis there and I'm just going to draw this off into the distance where it matches the uh, or where it hits the door and then I guess horizontally where the carpet is so let's draw that in there let's draw in some more on the keypad let's just draw in some bits of bits of carpet which we can sort out in a second so we can return to that view if we've rotated or whatever oh, that was a good guess it's roughly there Let's come and erase some of those additional lines. Let's do a little bit here where the lifts are. There we go. And we've now got some floor space. Let's just remove those lines. We've now got a bit of a floor plan. I'm going to draw a little bit more of a hallway behind the camera. Let's do it maybe there. I'm going to do a bit more actually. So this is the space that we're in at the moment. Let's uh, do some typical floor plan stuff. Let's offset outwards and let's go back into our photo view and let's pull some walls up from the ground. So I'm going to pull it up to, I can't see the point where the ceiling matches the, uh, sorry, meets the walls, but I can see that kind of coving there. So I'm going to go about halfway there. And I suppose we could pull out our tape measures. We could even say, how tall is that wall now? Three meters tall? Not implausible. There we go. So we're now starting to get a 3D space in which we can work. But how can we um, use more information from, from these photos to get this looking better? Some little bits I'm just going to tidy up there, I don't want that. I also don't want that. Oh, there we go. Like my things to be neat and tidy. Okay, so we've now got some floor and we've got some walls. We've got Laura in there. Let's um, say goodbye to Laura. I'm actually going to delete her now. Ta-ra. And let's have a look at a couple of the other bits of um, the photo match tool. So one of the things that really really great about the photo match or the match photo is the project textures from photo so i'm going to select you can either select a floor that you want to texture or we can just not select anything and it's going to just select uh, it's going to apply that texture to everything in the image so i'm going to click projects textures from photo it's going to ask me do I want to trim partially visible faces? So I'm going to click no. I always click no, and I'll tell you why in a second. You can see something's just happened here. Right, so what we've got now is we've now got the textures from our photograph applied to our walls. Now, it's all a bit mad over here and here, and this is because there isn't actually any information in that image. So it's just ended up repeating some of the other bits here. But this gives us a good indication, actually, of a couple of things. So we can see my door here kind of looks reasonably square, a little bit slanted. That means our perspective is almost right. If we go to camera view, let's change it to a top down view. Let's have a look at the, the hallway here. Um, let's have a look at the area kind of closest to the camera. That's nice and clear. What we can see is this geometric pattern on the carpet is relatively square, actually. Um, 
it's really good to look at the textures that appear and use these as a kind of reference to say you know is is this right have i set up my perspective correct because actually if i've made the perspective weird and i've made the corridor super super short or super super long then everything is going to start to project onto those uh, pieces of geometry in a way that we wouldn't expect them to so we could look at these doors here for example we could say well actually let's as we set laura as our scale if we drew in a door there and said it's a rough roughly there if we measured that now with the tape measure we would see we're two meters 0.24 tall quite a big tall door and 0.9 meters wide which is again a biggish door but it's probably roughly in proportion so we can actually start to model model in here we'd even be doing this from our camera view I could say let's do another door could do one there that one's a bit narrower <laughs> but that's okay but this kind of thing so we can actually start modeling directly from our photos uh, photos textures and this is a really you know really quick and useful way sometimes to be able to, to model things so let's do um, some more detail in the image I'm going to group this together actually for this next bit let's do this little kind of beam that we can see here so maybe round about there let's extrude it upwards up to the ceiling level and now we can see in the picture that it's actually a little bit bigger than I want it to be so let's push pull it inwards to about there I'd say that probably positioned it a little bit funny at the front so let's move it back a bit let's come around the other side let's select the back side of it go back to the view that I want to look at bring up my push pull tool and let's pull it in a smidge so I've got a beam there and we can see around about here This beam's going to come across the wall. Suppose it's going to come down on this side as well. The structure's a little bit different here, so we will. Uh, what we'll do is we'll group. We'll make this into a uh, component. Let's call this beam, and we'll sort this out in a moment. And let's repeat this beam a few times down the corridor, so we can see there's another one around about here, I think. Gonna make the second one unique actually because it's a little bit different because it's not attached to another wall in the same way on that side and we can just use the array function to build a few more in there so we're into kind of normal normal sketch choppy stuff now let's draw in our beams here let's push pull downwards there we go and we're starting to get some additional detail in here so we could even project onto those overwrite existing materials I'm going to click yes trim partially visible faces let me show you what happens if you click yes okay <laughs> so if you click um, trim partially visible faces um, this is probably actually that would have been easier to show you if I make everything uh, let's make everything the default material So if we uh, project our textures from the photo, overwrite the material, and it's trimmed partially visible faces, what it's done there is it's basically not repeated or tiled that texture anywhere where it can't see it, um, which looks really neat and tidy, and this can make things easier in some ways, but in lots of other ways, here we go, you can see you can't see what's behind the pillar, so it's not filled it in. But in order to do this, it's actually created geometry. So what we'll see is if we go into my group, this part of the floor is a different piece of geometry now to this. And this is problematic. So maybe I wanted to bring out this whole wall here, but in now it's separate. Likewise, this bottom piece. And if you didn't mean to do this, this can really mess you up. <laughs> so that's not how I want to work in SketchUp. I want it to be nice and neat and tidy, push pulling. In all the right places so let's uh, return things to how they were there we 
Okay. Let's zoom in. Let's do project textures from photo, overwrite existing materials, do not trim them. And now we can see how things are starting to come together here. And that is very roughly how we can use SketchUp Match Photo to take something that's not even a, a particularly real image, well it is a real image, to model from. And this is a really useful tool for illustration, for interior design, for architecture. Anything where you kind of want to get a sense of the space without having a physical floor plan or dimensions or an existing 3D model. So stick around, I'll throw up the model I end up with at the end here and maybe even if people want it we'll do a video on how we can fully texture and light this as well and go, in, go into wet rendering. So thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of the next video that we make and uh, thanks for watching.